In the battlefields of the Western Front, a plant grew in the midst of the chaos, the bright red Flanders poppy. In 1915, Canadian Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, after seeing the bloody conflict of Ypres, wrote the famous poem In Flanders Fields. Here's an extract of the first stanza. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. An American YWCA worker, Miss Moyna Michael, read it and wrote her own poem in reply to McRae's called We Shall Keep the Faith. Here's an extract from the last stanza. And now the torch and poppy red, we wear in honour of our dead. Fear not that you have died for naught, we'll teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders fields. At the YWCA War Secretaries Conference in 1918, she wore a poppy and gave some to the delegates. From then on, she wore a red poppy as a symbol of remembrance. Miss Michael campaigned to have the poppy adopted as a national symbol of remembrance. In 1920, the National American Legion adopted it as their official symbol of remembrance. The first poppy appeal took place in 1921 by the Royal British Legion. The poppy has become the symbol of remembrance for those who gave their lives. It's very interesting to note that some of the most iconic symbols of remembrance um, were very much influenced by chaplains and in no situation is this influence most clearly felt and in the case of the unknown warrior who was interred in Westminster Abbey in uh, 1919. The idea for this was essentially born of a chaplain's reflections on the number of unknown bodies who were actually um, buried in France and indeed elsewhere. And the idea of the unknown warrior, a soldier being brought back, given a place among kings, honoured by the public, by the empire at large as it were, given the sort of treatment which would only be accorded to the nation's greatest heroes. This is very much emblematic of one chaplain's experiences of the tremendous courage and resilience of um, British soldiers in this period and the desire that those who were buried without an identity, for want of a better expression, uh, would be honoured in a manner that was appropriate. And it really does give one an insight into the empathy and the compassion and the sense of solidarity which chaplains felt towards the men to whom they ministered. <laughs>